Here we have a very scary grave monster. He's not happy because he's stuck in the ground. And here I'm doing my best to get him out of the ground. I ripped him up and turned him upside down. I just wanted to show you how the mount works here. Kind of a cute little mounting bracket. And then you can see the bottom of the apparatus there. Isn't very helpful, but that's how they put it together. And there's a light sensor, that little black round thing on the left, and the start button on the right. Or vice versa, I don't know. We'll see that stuff later. Uh, the green, the yellow wires go to the start button. So here I have ripped the body off, left his hands attached to the ground, and his two eyes there are on the left side, and here's the mechanism. There's some foam wrapped around the mechanism uh, to bulk up the monster, I assume. And surprisingly, it's only one motor driving this whole thing. Wait till you see. I ripped this baby apart completely, so we'll see it all. And here's just a side view of it. Again, those are his eyes, those red LEDs over there. And then here's the apparatus, and the, the uh, what makes this thing uh, jump, there's a motor down at the bottom. Gearbox cover here on the right-hand side, and on the uh, far side there, you can barely see a drive belt on that far side. And what makes this thing jump is just an offset weight on the other side of the motor shaft that's making the motor vibrate. It's a little brass weight that's, that's mounted off-center. And that's all that's making this thing vibrate. Pretty slick. These people are really creative. And you can see the square shaft, the pivot point of this top half. I'll be pulling that out later. The round to top thing is just to form the monster's head. It has nothing in it. And then the bottom half below the pivot point is gearbox and motor. And just a rear view of it all. Not too much to learn here other than just taking a look and see what they're doing. Here I removed it totally from the base. Motors at the bottom and gearbox above that and on the far side. If you look carefully on the far side you can see a little drive, drive wheel. They use a little o-ring for a drive belt over there. We'll see it more clearly coming up. And here I'm just going to show you the start button and the light sensor. So the light sensor, you know, to sense if somebody walks by or not. And this little thing here that actually looks like a photo cell is just a, a push button energizer. Here's the photo cell that I'm holding now. And you'll be able to see inside it here in a minute. So there's the thing that they use to detect somebody walking by. And the thing on the right, you, uh, it's just a trigger. They had their start button pushing down on that, and the start button just had a little piece of metal at the bottom of it that would short out these two circuits. Here I'm going to short it with my screwdriver, and it starts up. That's a pretty tricky little start button. I like that. I'm going to use that for something. So it beats holding two wires together, which I'm going to show you. Actually, later on, it did not beat holding two wires together. And here I'm just holding it again, just to give you another view of the thing. And you just can't get enough of a good thing here, can you? So a little bit more, and we'll move on. Don't be like me, boys and girls. I lopped off my finger in machine shop in high school about 30 years ago. Wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And machines are stronger than flesh. And here is just a side view of that thing with the drive wheel cover off. So you can see the drive wheel and the little drive belt they use. And here's the little start button that I got sick of trying to short out with my screwdriver. And so what I did is just cut it off and strip the wires and I just short the wires together now to start it up. And here's the mechanism. And you can I put a little black dot right there on the wheel there so that we could watch it rotate. So the drive motor with a little wheel on it, driving the big wheel for a speed change and power change. 
and we can see that, that that thing is spinning and we can see when it spins because of my handy dandy little black mark there. And so at one point, you know, to extend the thing, they uh, drive the motor one direction and then to retract it, they drive the motor the other direction and all the shaking is because of that offset brass weight that we'll see in a minute. Here's the brass shape, the other side. So there's just a shaft going right through the gear train and you can see the shaft there is is uh, on the you know very edge of this brass weight and I put a black mark on this weight too so we could watch that move. So there it goes. That thing spins all the time and so the unit is, is vibrating all the time. We just don't notice it so much until the thing comes to a stop and we really notice it. Pretty creative stuff. A little black bumper there when, they get, when the uh, brass cover was on, that bumper would bump up against the, gr the cover. Just to lessen the blow, I would guess. I'll be pulling that shaft out of the pivot point too. We'll look at that in a minute. There, I'm just pulling it down manually so we can watch that brass weight move a little slower so we can see what it's doing. And here I unscrewed that headpiece and got half of it off that shaft. You can see that I pulled part of that shaft out of there with my vice grips and that shaft just drove all the way through the gears and then eventually I just pull that shaft completely out of there and open up the gearbox and here's what we get. You can see on the right there the little black thing that was the o-ring and the drive wheel on the other side and then here's the guts of it. Well greased. Make a note for your own gear trains. kind of take a look at how they're driving these gears and how they're adjusting speed based on the number of teeth in a gear. And there you have it.